Hi guys, welcome to Sourcing Classes. This is Sima Hegde presenting before you the current and contemporary affairs in anthropology. Anthropological approaches to study religion. John Lubbock made an attempt to combine the archaeological evidence of prehistoric people on the one hand and anthropological evidence of primitive people on the other to trace the evolution and origin of religion. In this scheme, development of fetishism followed by nature worship and totemism that is a system of belief involving the relationship of specific animals to plants, shamanism, anthropomorphism, monotheism that is belief in one god and finally ethical monotheism. In the late 19th century with the influential works of Max Muller, W. Robertson Smith, Edward B. Tyler Merritt and Sir James G. Fraser, anthropological study on religion grew at a fast pace. All of them sought to understand religious beliefs and practices at the most fundamental or basic level. The anthropology of religion owes a great debt to Emile Durkheim who put forward the concept of sacred, profane orders and the so-called supernatural and natural categories which have proved to be more beneficial in the better understanding the in better understanding the concept of religion a strong impetus to subsequent application of this theory is found among the british structural functionalists such as ratcliffe brown ratcliffe brown e e evans mayer fortis and melford spiro etc who also made significant contributions towards understanding religion. They primarily focused on the religion of tribal groups. If we speak of evolutionary approaches, John Lubbock made an early attempt to combine the archaeological evidence of prehistoric people and anthropological evidence of primitive people. He outlined an evolutionary scheme that is atheism, is greater than the fetishism which is greater than the nature worship which is greater than totemism then comes shamanism followed by anthropomorphism then the monotheism and then ethical monotheism as de uh, described earlier eb tyler in his book primitive culture proposed that animism is the earliest and most basic religious form and and from that evolved fetishism, then the belief in demons, polytheism and then monotheism. He defines religion in such a way that all forms of it could be included, namely as the belief in spiritual being. Now if we were to talk, of, talk about the psychological approach, religion is a profound emotional response to various aspects of life and various emotive factors were given to explain the basis of religion. Sigmund Freud was a leading figure. His thesis is that religious rituals and beliefs are homologous with neurotic symptoms. According to him, a deep subconscious psychological conflict with social groups is responsible for the development of religion. The basic Freudian premise is that religious practices can be useful interpre usefully interpreted as expressions of unconscious psychological forces and this has become amid much polemic and established tradition of inquiry. The psychological approach has been superseded by functional functionalist approach. Now speaking of functionalism, it emphasizes on the interrelations between the various elements of social system. Society is seen as a self-regulating system in which religion, economic organization and kinship form parts of an organic whole. Impacts of Buddhism on Indian Society It is a commonly accepted fact that Buddhism is a derivative of ancient Hinduism and one of the most important religions in the world. In the 6th century BC, Gautama Buddha founded Buddhism. Originally named Siddhartha, his royal living didn't make him content and he was tormented by observing sickness, 
suffering from the old and death around him. He became a wanderer, searching for solutions to mankind's miseries, and finally abandoned everything to meditate under a peepal tree and attain supreme knowledge on the 49th day of his continuous meditation. Now speaking of the impact on the Indian culture, A. Impact of Buddhism on caste and social culture. It focused greatly on truthfulness, charity, purity, self-sacrifice, control over desires, love, equality and non-violence. Buddhism teachings raised a voice against the infamous caste system challenging the superiority of the Brahmins, social oppression, oppression of women and inequality. B. Impact on religion. Buddhism condemned superstitions and the exercising of rites and rituals followed by Hinduism, especially animal sacrifice to appease gods. Buddhism also promoted idol worship which was later adopted by Hinduism too. C. Impact on art and architecture. The growth of art is one of the greatest impacts of Buddhism in Indian culture. Buddhism enriched India's architectural heritage through the stupas of Sanchi, Amravati, Gaya, etc. D. Impact of Buddhism on Education One of the greatest impacts of Buddhism in Indian society was in the field of education. The Buddhists carried their belief in egalitarianism and compassion by un-universalizing or un or universalizing the education for you women and shudras. Buddhist missionaries traveled across India to spread literature, language and culture. Now E. Impact on Buddhism of Buddhism on Nationalism Buddhism spread Indian culture across India and supported the concept of national unity and universal brotherhood. Mahatma Gandhi adopted the doctrine of Ahimsa and used it for the struggle against British rule for the freedom. The Indian flag carries the Ashoka's wheel and the national emblem has been adopted from Buddhism. In conclusion, Buddhism has undoubtedly made several changes and inspired India's philosophy, art, architecture, literature and politics and other countries such as Nepal, China, Japan, Sri Lanka, Burma, etc. It gave people a simple way to live with, live life with a rational and moral mindset. It also helped in removing many vices of the society due to inequality and violence, bringing Indians together to create a sense of unity and brotherhood. Lastly, we have primates and traits. Primates are one of at least 20 orders belonging to the class Mammalia. All members of this class share certain characteristics including, among others, having fur or hair, producing milk from mammary glands and being warm-blooded. There are three types of mammals, mono, trims, marsupials and placental mammals. Monotremes are the most primitive of the mammals, meaning they have retained more ancient traits than marsupials or placental mammals. And so, monotremes are characterized by some of the unusual traits. Monotremes, which include duck-billed platypus, lay eggs rather than give birth to live young. Once the young hatch, they lap up milk produced from glands on the mother's abdomen rather than latch onto nipples. Marsupial mammals are those like kangaroos and koalas who internally gestate for a very short period of time. Joys, as these newborns are called, complete their growth externally in their mother's pouch where they suckle. And the placental mammals internally gestate for a longer period of time and give birth to fairly well-developed young who are then nursed. Primates, including ourselves, belong to this last, the last group, that is, the placental mammals. Among the diversity of mammalian orders alive today, primates are very likely one of the oldest. Now, types of traits. 
when evaluating relationships between different groups of primates we use key traits that allow us to determine which species are most closely related to one another traits can be either primitive or derived primitive traits are those that a taxon has because it has inherited the trait from a distant ancestor for example all primates have body hair because we are mammals and mammals share an ancestor hundreds of millions of years ago that had body hair this trait has been passed down to all the mammals from the shared ancestors so all mammals alive today have body hair derived traits are those that have been more recently altered this type of trait is useful when we are trying to distinguish one group from another because derived traits tell us which taxa are more closely related to one another for example humans walk on two legs there are many adaptations or the many adaptations that humans possess which allow us to move in this evolved way after human split from the genus span this means that when we find fossil taxa that share derived traits for walking on two legs we can conclude that they are likely more closely related to humans than to chimpanzees and bonobos so that is it for today hope you found it informative thank you